A very good evening to you and welcome to News First Primetime News here on TV1. I'm Shahin Jirampati and let's start off to look at tonight's headlines. Investigations launched into the Galaha incident. Doctors request for security. Arrest Admiral Ravi Vijay if there is sufficient evidence. Gotabaya, PB Jaya Sundara and Lalit Viratunga provide statements to the CID attached to the Presidential Commission into Sri Lankan Airlines. Cabinet to liquidate the functions of National Wealth Cooperation Limited run by the Mahapula Trust Fund. On to those stories in detail, an investigation has been launched into the death of an infant which resulted in a tense situation opposite the Galaha Hospital. Sankar Sanjeeva, who was suffering from high fever, passed away after he was admitted to the Gala Hospital and then transferred to the Peradeniya Hospital for further treatment. He is the youngest in the family with two elder siblings. His father engages in business while his mother is employed in a daycare. Locals in the area acted in an unruly manner damaging the properties of the hospital, claiming that doctors of the hospital did not provide the required treatment to Sanjeevan yesterday. Officials of the 10 police stations including Gampala, Galaha, Peradeniya, Navalapitiya and Kadugan Nava and officials of the special task force were deployed to control the situation. The doctor who treated the child was trapped inside the hospital for over eight hours. The police had to dress the doctor in a police uniform to take him out of the location. The doctor who was assaulted by the protesters received treatment at the Candy Hospital and was discharged this afternoon. Residents living in areas including Deltota received treatment from the Galha Hospital. Three doctors and a staff comprising of 20 officers are employed at the hospital. Two doctors were on duty providing clinical and in-house treatment when the child was admitted to the hospital. Medical activities of the hospital have been disrupted after its properties were damaged by protesters yesterday. Police officers of the Galaha and Gampala police stations have been deployed to provide security to the hospitals. These are the views expressed by the relatives of the infant and the hospital authorities. About it. He fell sick at around 6.30 in the morning. We admitted him to the hospital at around 7 a.m. Although the relatives of the infant say he was admitted at around 7 a.m., Director of Health Services for the Central Province, Dr. Shanti Samarasinghe, said the child was admitted to the hospital at around 9 as the clinics of the hospital was open. A small paper was provided when we admitted him. They did not hold steam for the child, although the doctor instructed to do so. They didn't provide medicine for the child. The basic treatment was given to the child at the Gala Hospital. This unfortunate situation had taken place when the child was transferred to the main hospital. The child has had breathing difficulties. When the doctors were about to provide medicine, a group had caused unrest there and taken the child in an ambulance. The individual who met with an accident arrived in the hospital after we admitted our child there. He was on the phone and did not treat our child. Then he rushed to those who were injured in the accident. Two women fell off a bus flying from Deltota to Kandy near the Galha Kovil yesterday morning. Director of Health Services for the Central Province, Dr. Shanti Samarasinghe said steps were taken to treat the two injured individuals and transfer them to the Kandy General Hospital after the basic treatment was given to the infant. She added that the doctor had inquired about Sankar Sanjeevan from the medical staff while he was treating the two injured women. We appointed a team led by the Deputy Director of Health Services for the Central Province to look into the child's death. The investigation is underway. Steps should be taken to stop the law from being used by the citizens. If not, the GMOA will have to be given minimum powers. The citizens of this country will know how to take care of the Galha Hospital better than us. Doctors will not be sent to the Galha Hospital until the GMO is convinced. There are around 1,050 minor hospitals. We will have to take a decision on all the doctors attached to all 1,050 hospitals. An investigation is underway. I immediately informed the police SDF to control the situation and to ensure the security of the doctors and the medical staff. We will take strict actions and conduct a thorough investigation. President Maithri Pala Sirisena left for Nepal to attend the fourth summit of the Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multisectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation or BIMSTEC, which will be held from tomorrow until the 31st of August. The summit is being held in Kathmandu, Nepal. 
The theme of the fourth Bimstek summit is towards a peaceful, prosperous and sustainable Bay of Bengal region. Bangladesh, Bhutan, India. Communication, tourism, fisheries, agriculture, cultural cooperation, environment and disaster management, public health and climate change during the summit. The specialty is that the president will receive chairmanship of BIMSTEC. Also, discussions are underway at the summit to reach an agreement between the seven countries. Members of BIMSTEC have been given different responsibilities. For example, Sri Lanka should lead in the technology sector. We will have to give leadership when preparing a system for technology. The Enterprise Sri Lanka 2018 National Exhibition centered on reconciliation, democracy and development was declared open in Monaragala today. The event aims to publicize the government's ambitious program to create a paradise of entrepreneurs. The event was declared open to the general public this morning by Minister of Finance Mangala Samravira. <laughs> The exhibition will have 12 zones and 515 trade stores of private and public sectors to raise the awareness among public on the implementation of the recently launched interest-subsidized loan scheme Enterprise Sri Lanka. The Prime Minister visited the premises this evening. The exhibition will be held until the 31st of August at the premises of the Monoragala District Secretariat. It will be open to the general public from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. ಬಟ್ <laughs> The Presidential Commission of Inquiry in Sri Lankan Airlines convened once again today to investigate into matters of abuse, misuse and mismanagement of the company's resources. A pseudonym used to start an account at the commercial bank in Barella in, in connection with the transaction brought up at the PCOI was that of Russian star tennis player Anna Kornikova. 
Testifying before the commission, a managerial level official handling finances stated that lavish expenditure had been undertaken by the organization on a number of occasions. The witness in particular highlighted two issues, one surrounding internet booking engines or IBEs and another surrounding a party thrown at the Ritz-Carlton in 2014. IBEs are bookings that are done completely over the internet without the use of the agent representing the airline. As the process has a low cost of sales, the airline had initially not offered commissions for IBE sales. However, the witness appearing today stated that even though board approval to pay overriding commissions on IBE-based bookings was not received until 2015, a sum amounting to Rs 84 million was paid between 2013 and 2015 to GSAs from multiple countries. Testifying further, the witness stated that the airline held a luxury event at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Moscow to commemorate the launch of their Colombo Moscow flights in 2014. The event was said to have cost close to US dollars 100,000. In addition to this expenditure, an additional expense of US dollars 84,000 was said to have been borne to facilitate handling of VIPs attending the event. In what was another suspicious move, Anna Kornakova, a woman representing the airline's general sales agent in Russia, had reportedly asked that Sri Lankan Airlines deposit the GSA fees, a sum close to 2.35 million rupees, be deposited at a personal bank account at the commercial bank in Borella in 2015. Sri Lankan Airlines had refused to adhere to such orders as they were in violation. I'm making stories on the other side. Lieutenant Commander Chandana Prasad Hetty Arachi of the Sri Lanka Navy, who was arrested in connection with the abduction and enforced disappearance of 11 youth, was further remanded until the 12th of September today. The order was issued when the case was taken up before Fort Magistrate Lanka Jairatna today. The Fort Magistrate informed the Criminal Investigations Department today that if there is sufficient evidence to prove that Chief of Defence Staff Admiral Ravindra Vijay Gunaratna aided and abetted Lieutenant Commander Chandana Prasad Hetiarachi to go into hiding, Admiral Vijay Gunaratna should be immediately arrested and produced before court. The case was postponed to the 12th of September. The Cabinet of Ministers decided today to liquidate the functions of the National Wealth Corporation Limited and NatWealth Securities Limited, which is established under the Mahapola Higher Education Scholarship Trust Fund. Mahapola the Cabinet of Ministers approved the proposal presented by Minister of Higher Education and Cultural Affairs Dr. Vijay Dasa Rajapaksa to invest all the funds owned by the Mahapola Higher Education Scholarship Trust Fund in government banks and central bank bonds, liquidating the functions of these two companies in order to formalize the investments. The decision was taken in a bid to strengthen the Mahapola Higher Education Scholarship Trust Fund as the two companies established to invest in it have caused the fund certain disadvantages. Cabinet also approved the proposal to amend the name of the Mahapola Higher Education Trust Fund Act as Lalit Athulat Mudali Mahapola Higher Education Trust Fund Act. These two companies were established under complete ownership of the Mahapola Trust Fund, which was initiated as a concept of Minister Lalit Athulat Mudali for the welfare of higher education students. The Mahapola Higher Education Trust Fund is headed by the Chief Justice. Several issues arose surrounding companies which were established using the resources of funds with such an administrative structure. The primary issue is the fact that the funds of the National Wealth Corporation Limited and NatWealth Securities Limited are being diverted to an external company. It was even revealed at the Presidential Commission of Inquiry that this company suffered serious losses due to the central bank bond scam. What is the reason behind the decision to liquidate companies? What are the investments that have been made using the funds established to secure the education rights of the children in need? Shouldn't an audit be conducted before these companies are liquidated? News First is keeping a close watch. More details to follow. In more local news, Japanese State Minister for Foreign Affairs Kazayuki Nakane, who arrived in the country on an official visit, called on the acting Sri Lankan Foreign Minister Lakshman Kiriyala today. Japanese State Minister of Foreign Affairs Kazuyuki Nakane arrived in the island last night. Nakane is the second high-ranking Japanese diplomat to visit Sri Lanka in a matter of weeks. 
The meeting between Kazayuki Nakane and Lakshman Kiriella had centered around the third phase of the Central Expressway, development of the North and East Container Terminals at the Colombo Port, development of the BIA, as well as a series of other development projects. According to a communique issued by the Ministry, discussions were held on developing infrastructure of the North and East Terminals of the Colombo Port, the completion of 66 years of diplomatic relations between the two nations, the development of the Bandar Naika Airport, development of Kandy, improving agricultural activities, establishing a green energy park and a number of other topics. The Japanese State Minister of Foreign Affairs engaged in a tour of the museum at the Jiarja Wardena Center. <laughs> The State Minister obtained blessings from the Hunupitiya Sri Ganga Rama Temple today. The Japanese State Minister for Foreign Affairs participated at the commissioning ceremony of the petrol vessels donated from Japan to Sri Lanka at the Colombo port this evening. The Japanese Ambassador to Sri Lanka, Kenichi Sugunuma, and the State Minister of Defense, Ruan Vijay Warduna, were also present at the event. The vessels will be used mainly for search and rescue, pollution control and oil spill management, as well as maritime security board boarding operations. Speaking at the inauguration ceremony of the CIMA Business Leader Summit 2018 yesterday, Minister of Science, Technology Research and Skills Development Dr. Sarat Amunugama expressed the following views. In a competitive world, in a more and more dangerous world, area where global volatility, global dangers in currencies, in oil production, in all those main elements that determine global economics and global trade, we are somewhat exposed. I think at present we are thinking in a very lopsided fashion. How many of you in this hall know what is happening in the port city? How many of you in this hall knows what's going on in Hambantota and in our ports? How many of you know what is happening in these large infrastructure projects that are going in this country? How, do you, how many of us know about what is going on in this dysfunctional educational system? It's ridiculous when such large numbers of people who go up to A-level face university entrance examinations which is based entirely on this very formal education and the number of people who can get into the university is a minuscule number compared to all those who have been given education up to grade 30. It's a waste. With all due respect, we would like to ask the minister the number of MPs and ministers who are aware of the bond scam one bond scam 2 and the FDA. The CIMA Business Leader Summit 2018 kicked off in Colombo with the participation of over 400 business leaders. The two-day summit is themed from insight to impact, unlocking opportunities. Dr. Saratamuru Gama, Minister of Science, Technology, Research, Skills Development, Vocational Training and Kandyan Heritage graced the occasion as the chief guest. The summit was addressed by former CEO of Dialogue Asiata Malaysia. This morning, Prakash Ayer, motivational speaker, leadership coach and author, delivered the keynote speech during the two days of the CIMA Business Leaders Summit 2018. So good question to ask yourself as a leader, what do you see around you? Do you see problems? Because if you look for problems, you'll find them. Do you see why things won't work or do you see how why things work? And I think depending on what you see, you will find that typically that's what you are finding. Look for problems, you'll find them. Look for solutions, you'll find them too. So I think it's important for all of us as leaders to become the kind of people who can find solutions. 
A panel discussion was held with the participation of Governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, Dr. Indrajit Kumar Swami. Uh, let, me, let me say that um, the Central Bank is very conscious uh, that EKYC would reduce the transaction cost, particularly of onboarding customers. Yeah. Uh, and it is, would be very positive in terms of inclusion. The panel included Dinesh Veera Kodi as moderator, Dr. Raina Dushman, CEO of Dialogue Asiata Private Limited, Riaz Mihula, managing partner of KPMG, and Tony Veera Singha, founder of Millennium IT. Another panel discussion was held in the evening with the participation of Venkat Ramanan, Carl Cruz, Jeevan Nyanam, Kasturi Chella Raja, and Dumit Fernando. So you listen and build the culture to face it, and the culture is teamwork. So I come from sports, so I believe in that. But I find this, the biggest resistance is to get people to work together and kind of support others to succeed. Can the Central Bank of Sri Lanka deny claims that the company, which was granted a 10 billion rupee loan, was also given loan facilities by state banks to the tune of a mammoth 50 billion rupees? Why were the respective state banks not aware of the 50 billion rupee loan granted to this company? What is even more amusing is that while the company was given 50 billion rupees as loans, the government itself was creating business opportunities to the tune of 40 billion rupees for this same company. What are the political parties and who are the politicians who benefited from the profits that accumulated from these loans? Was subject minister Kabir Hashim not aware of this? Was the Ministry of Development Strategies unaware of this? Governor of the Central Bank, this is over to you. The gum at the door-to-door -to -door team encountered a school where children receive education by day and by night becomes a cattle shed. Gum at the door-to-door -door initiative. There are around 600 students receiving education at the Periyapul Lamale Mixed Roman Catholic School in the Cheng Kaladi Divisional Secretariat. There are nine teachers in the school. Students from the Periyapulla Malay and Ambagastanna villagers receive education here. These classrooms do not have the adequate amount of desks and chairs for the children. While the politicos are busy spending lavishly, these students do not even have the basic requirements to receive their education. The school does not have a wall or fence around it. The villagers state that by night this building becomes a cattle shed and thieves rob away the equipment that are placed at the school. The students who arrive in the morning have to first clean the premises before they start the day's work. The people in the Tumpal and Cholan village in Batikolo spoke to the gum at the team and said they are facing many issues as a result of the lack of clean drinking water. They charge the water that is supplied to them in bowsers once every week is not adequate. If the farmers go into the paddy fields on the day the bowsers arrive to deliver water, Another gum at the team spoke to the people in the Kanave Gala village in Monoragala. This road, which is used by 170 families in the area, is dilapidated. Another team met with the residents of the Thambana village in Madagama Bibila in the Monoragala district. They too are suffering as a result of a dilapidated road that they use on a day-to-day -day basis. They also face a drinking water issue. In addition, there is no bridge across a dik or a river to travel between the Thambana and Madagama villagers. The villagers of Sinnapadu Udapur and Pilleyavatta in Putlam do not have drinking water and they have to purchase the water that they consume. They charge that they are facing a garbage issue as well. In addition, the villagers charge that once it rains, the water does not recede for months, leaving the area inundated. A gum at the team met with the people of Virapadiana in Putlam and heard their problems. They too face issues as a result of the dilapidated roads and the lack of access to clean drinking water. Gum at the door-to-door -door initiative and that is a wrap of primetime news thank you very much for watching i'm shayan jurampadi good night and take care